Hey, welcome back guys. In this week's video, we have a DAF XF Euro 6 MX-13 that has been brought into us with various fueling and regeneration issues. So, let's get into this. I've brought the vehicle up to operating temperature as I find it helps with diagnosing fuel related issues rather than trying to do it from cold. As you can see on the dash, we have lane departure, engine and exhaust malfunctions. I've changed it up a bit this week and we're using gel test on DAF. I'm sick of people wanting me to sell them a Davy, so I'm going to show you you can do this job on any diagnosis computer, as long as you have a methodical testing plan to point you in the right direction. We will start by using the VIN identification feature on gel test, which is amazing for all the Merc, Iveco and Deo junk that I have to plug in. From here, we can just run a main system scan, which will pull all the DTCs from the various ECUs, and we can concentrate on the active DTCs and work from there. With P3858 currently active, and the operator stating that the fuel shutoff valve has already been replaced, and the vehicle still faulty, we will concentrate on this DTC. From here, we can narrow this fault down to one ECU and look at the DTC in more detail. With the subscription expired on gel test, I need a bit more information to come up with the diagnosis plan. So I've come up with this app for DAF trucks from 2014 to 2022 that allows me to see what has caused the fault and how to rectify it. With this fault being set at regeneration, we will need to start there to induce the fault. And then from here, we can work out what is causing the fault. So with the fault cleared, let's get the fault to become active again, so we can verify the customer's concern. We will force a regeneration on this vehicle and see if the fault is reproducible for us to diagnose. As you can see, the fuel dosing valve is currently deactivated, as the trucks bring in the after treatment system up to operating temperature. When the diesel oxidising catalyst, or DOC, reaches about 260 to 270 degrees, the fuel dosing valve will start to inject fuel, which will then increase the system's operating temperature to its full maximum regeneration temperature to burn off the soot in the DPF, but I'm not too concerned about that process today. As you can see, the truck has shut down the regeneration process as it has been unable to operate the fuel dosing valve, activating our fault again. Why is this? Well, one possible issue could be fuel pressure, so on to the next test. I'm running a fuel injection leak off test here, not because I think we have a high return quantity of fuel, but because I know I can stress the fuel system to the maximum operating pressure at 2500 bar of pressure. With this test, I can monitor all the fuel system and see what pressure the truck is making. It's all about using the least invasive method possible to identify the issue. With the whole fuel system overview now available to me, I can already see we're struggling for fuel pressure on the low pressure side. I'd like to see 6 bar here at idle and 8 bar at 1200 RPM, which is not what we have here. So now we need to get more invasive and diagnose the low fuel pressure side of the system. Time to get the cab over. As you can see I'm in the big workshop today, i.e. outside, and I can make as much mess as I want out here. So we have a few components to check here. Ah, one new air fuel shut off valve that didn't need to be fitted at a thousand quid. There's no damage to the supply pipe or the fuel dosing valve on the exhaust, so it's not an external leak. Other possible causes are the filters, the fuel filter stack pipe filter, 
or this low pressure fuel pump, which costs about 500 quid. So we better get this diagnosis right. Rather than take the filters out, play a guessing game and change parts like the fuel lift pump that don't need to be changed. I'm going to break into the fuel system and put a mechanical gauge in to validate the data from Jaltest. And we can also put it in various points on the low pressure side to check various components without needing to change or remove them. And it makes for a good video. With our pressure gauge fitted, we can run the truck and check the pressure. With the pressure on jowl test and the pressure on the gauge reading low from the outlet of the low pressure lift pump, I'm going to fit the gauge at the beginning of the fuel system and check to see if the restriction is in the fuel tank. This could be a blocked pickup pipe for instance. We're going to need to swap to a gauge that can do negative pressure now that we're checking for a draw from the fuel tank filter to the lift pump. With this gauge showing practically zero, our restriction isn't at the fuel tank. It's time to move the gauge under the hand primer and before the lift pump. As you can see, the gauge has gone practically to the end stop and has a massive restriction going on. We best whip out the hand primer and rip out the strainer filter that Daft so kindly put into the fuel system. This looks nice and clean, said no one ever. Well, out with the old and in with the new, and as much as you can clean these, I think the seals had seen better days on the old one. So with the hand primer now reassembled, we can check our gauge again. And with the truck showing under 5 psi draw on the fuel system and our fuel pressure now pulling over 8 bar at 1000 rpm we had one more test to do but first we need to clean up the mess i'd made With the cab now down, we can jump back onto gel test and carry out our leak off test again to check that we were making some decent numbers at maximum operating pressure. Now that we're seeing factory fuel pressure results, we'd best carry out our original test for regeneration.
Again, with the truck ramping up to operating temperature, we can monitor the system and wait for the truck to operate the fuel dosing valve to bring the system up to regeneration temperature. With this function now working, I can cancel the regeneration and return it to the customer. If you want more fuel pressure diagnosis, I've got this video here with diagrams. And if you've enjoyed this video, drop a like, hit me up in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.